Hi there! Today in this video, I will show you the first demo of the Android things. From this example, you will understand how can we send signals from our Android things to any external hardware. Let me turn this on and you will see how it actually works. This is a basic blink app. You'll see my LED here where it start blinking once the app start running. You can see my device just booted. It says Android things. The app start running and my LED is blinking. I will show you how to achieve this stage with Android things. Here are the things you will need. Of course, first you need a LED. Some of you may not know that LED actually has two different lengths of the pins. The longer one is the positive side, the shorter one is the negative side. And you will need a resistor. I am using the one that is 330 ohms. It's very common for LEDs. You can use a little bit higher than 330 if you want your light to be dimmer. And you can find resistors at a lot of places. The color may be different. It's all based on the material. And of course, you will need two jumper wires. There are male to female jumper wires. <laughs> and a breadboard. There are other items. I recommend you to have when you work on hardware projects. Of course, a multimeter. This one is just the one I got from college. It's nothing fancy, but it does a job. And it also helps you to tell you the resistance of the resistor. So I can show you an example. You can turn it up here. I will turn it to 2000 because I know my resistance is going to be very low. And then point the red one to the middle pin and the black one to the cone. Then from here, I just clip the two end to my resistor. And you can already see here it says 329. So they're a little bit like not perfect, but that's common for most electronic devices. Of course, I prepared batteries. It's just help us to really test our circuit before we really get things going. Let's first start with the breadboard part. I will just give you a quick tutorial, some breadboard, any little vertical pins are connected. The gap is a gap, means they're not connected. What we usually do is we decide on a positive part. So you see here it has a, a row, it says plus on the side, that's recommended. We'll just follow the recommendation. I will put my positive pin into the positive wire. So I'm using a positive to positive one just for testing purposes. And I put negative one to the negative pin, the so blue, blue minus row. And then we need to have a flow. So here I will just go through from positive to negative. As I mentioned, things as vertical are connected. So from here, all those rows are connected and then we need to jump it over to the middle part. So I just gonna save some wires just from the positive. So remember the longer part of the LED is a positive. I just bended it so it looks like the same length, but they're actually different length. The longer part towards the positive one and then jump it over to the middle part, like so. Then, so you see here, we need to jump from this row to the negative part. Then we need to have a resistor or else our LED will just blow up. So let me do this. Jump from here to the negative. It's pretty tight. Okay, then here I jumped to the negative row. Okay, so now we have a circuit working. So here's the time to test. 
actually I need to put two batteries to power this thing up. It's not enough voltage because one of it only has 1.5 volts. It's not enough to power up the LED. So I actually put them two together, connect the ground and then positive part. Now my LED just turned on as you can see. So this means my circuit is working. Now we can go to the Android things part. I am using the Pico Pro Maker Kit. The board is Pico IMX7 Dual Development Board. This really looks like a Raspberry Pi and the most part we need to interact with actually are these rows. And they're numbered. If you look closely, you can see there are some very, very tiny numbers. There are one, two, and the other side it says uh, 3940. So they're mapped. There is a picture I will link down below. And this is very important when it comes to development for this board so we know which pin to connect to. Let's go to the computer and I will show you how to download the Android Things app and install it on this board. We need to get an example from the Android Things website. So here is the URL developer.android.com slash things slash SDK slash samples.html. Here have a lot more samples. The LED one is the second one. It's called the native PIO. And we click on the URL. You can see here they don't have the example for our board. But that's fine. I have showed you on my site. So you can either download or clone the project and open it in Android Studio like so. I will explain it to you a bit how it actually works. Here it is the main activities at the own create it pretty much just looking for the LED get the pin name so I added that because I was not sure how the pins are gonna work before I find the actual pin maps so thanks Fernanda on Twitter who shared me with this picture it's super super useful that's all the pins and how do we find it? So on this one, they're looking for GPIO 34. You guys remember we had to count things from one to 40. So we need to find pin 31 for the correct pin to work. And in the board defaults here, actually written down which pin it's been connected to. And we can change it to the available pins that's out there. If you have not flashed your Android things, board so please go to my previous video to flash your device here I have the Android things connected as you can see it's actually running it so you can just build and run then your app will work so now I have the Android things running on my device and it's very tiny but it definitely says blink here that's the blink app i will explain it to you how exactly it works first we need to find our ground pin from the picture it says pin six it's a ground pin it's a negative one so let's count one two three four five six so that is pin six i have a male to female cable just plug into six don't worry it's only five volts it's very very small we are not gonna die from it just by touching it and then we need to find pin 30 one which is gpio 34 that's going to be quite a bit counting so let's do it 31 right and we can actually count in front of 40 side 40 39 34 33 32 31 so this should be the 34 which is 33 i know it's a bit hard so please save that picture for future use and i just want to make sure my signal actually correct because when we are making IoT projects, we have two parts of the project. One is the software, one, another part is the hardware. So here it comes to the multimeter. You don't have to have it, but you know what? It's handy when you work on hardware. So let's just change it to pointing to the 20 because I know like the voltage is very small. The dark wire connects to the ground first. Ground connecting first is always safer. 
and then this is a signal connect you to the right wire so as you can see here see my signal is changing from very low 0 to 3 volts that is the signal we are looking for once we have this connected which means our LED will be blinking let's turn that off save some batteries unplug this so here is the thing we had, right? Do you remember? So ground to ground, ground to ground. We can even unplug this, no more. And then the signal to positive. Oh, it works right away. See, it's blinking. Can unplug the other one. Hooray. So now we got the signal from Android things. Now from our Android apps, we can actually send signals to physical electronical components and devices. You can do lots more crazy things from it. And hope you enjoy this video. And we'll continue to do more Android things tutorials. And see you next time. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to be able to use the YouTube creator space to make my videos. However, my subscriber base is not large enough to meet their requirements. I live in a very, very small apartment. In order for me to set up everything, that takes a long time. And after filming, I have to take them down. So if I get about 10,000 subscribers, then I can use the YouTube space, which means I will be able to make more videos in a shorter time. And so please subscribe. It will help me so much. And see you next video. Bye for now.